So recently I got a bit of free time and I was watching a bit of Hardware Unboxed and I noticed Tim on the news corner, he said something that I thought was a little bit off. I'll roll it for you guys. Now Halim, for example, was released in 2008 and Westmi in 2010. So if you're using a CPU from eight to 10 years ago, it's probably time to update it anyway. So I'm pretty sure some people would agree with this statement, but if you guys know me, you'll know X58 is practically my favorite platform of all time because it has triple channel memory, because it can get those six core 12 threaded Xeons for so cheap and you can overclock them sky high. And on that note, that's exactly what we're gonna be doing here today. We've got the X58 from ASUS, a great motherboard, and I also wanna test it because I actually haven't tried one of these for a very long time, and I wanna see how high it can go with an X5675. Now the X5675, apparently it is a better bin than the X5670. Also got a higher multiplier as well, so I'm curious to see how high I can take this thing. Now for the cooling, we're using uh, the Baron case from Deepcool. I've been meaning to check this out for such a long time, just been backlogged quite a bit. And this is essentially a case that includes a water cooler, fancy tempered glass too, and it doesn't break the bank. So with that aside, let's put this thing together and see what kind of numbers it can push out. So first things first with X58, if you haven't used one of these boards in a while, you have to take off this heatsink here and make sure you replace the thermal paste on the Northbridge heatsink because it can get quite hot and if it doesn't have good cooling, then it could be a problem, especially when you're overclocking. Now it is pretty late at night, so I don't wanna be using brake cleaner as I do wanna get into overclocking straight away, but I will give a quickie with the data vac and then also change the thermal paste on this Northbridge heatsink here. So I know some people will be upset but we have to make do and try and start overclocking this thing. So let's get on with it. So we've got all the components there ready to go inside the Baron case and we're gonna be giving this X58 some brand new loving. We've got a new one terabyte drive, a new 240 gigabyte SSD and also a 1080 Ti and a brand new 750 watt power supply. And this time I do have the IO shield guys. So go crazy in the comments, rejoice. We have this piece of metal here, which is going to boost FPS by at least 50%. And the build is now complete and it did take a while to do this build simply because we have to move the power supply instead of having it in the normal position over the top or underneath we had to put it in the back here and then sort of screw it off to the top and then put all that back together and also the motherboard was actually a really tight fit in this case i actually had a bit of trouble getting in it initially and of course the graphics card actually still goes into the case that way so overall though i mean now that it's all finished uh it's actually not a bad look it's actually really tidy and of course we've got a full-size atx board in something that would be the size of a micro atx size case i guess that's the whole theme behind the baron case itself but of course how good is the included liquid cooler we're gonna find out right now fire this thing up and get into some overclocking and also deep cool i think these molex connectors they're really got to go and if you don't wanna let them go, then I'm just gonna keep doing this. So it's pretty late now and Windows is updating and I'm just gonna leave this thing updating overnight so we can get all those uh, latest updates and whatnot. But the build is running and it's looking really good, especially at night when the uh, RGB can shine through. On the top, you've got the ability to change the colors, uh, red, green, blue, yellow, white, and then like, 
the same colors but with like blinking on and off so that's about it you can just turn it on and off if you wish to as well i think for some reason the red which is the default color i just think that looks the best out of the box you guys can let us know in the comment section what you think is the best color on this thing but surprise it's a tight little unit and tomorrow I'm, after i sleep i'm going to overclock this thing sky high and see what the temperatures are like with this included cooler and then see how it plays games with that 1080 ti So here we are back at it again, and I had to update the BIOS before because uh, there was only two sticks of memory being utilized, but now after the BIOS update, there is three sticks. I was also doing my head in because there was this weird problem, and I've seen this only once before, but I realized it uh, can sort of have an effect on how your device boots up, especially on older school motherboards. And that is Windows for some reason decided to install the system reserve file here to the hard drive, and then install the Windows itself to the boot drive. And so what I had to do is figure out that this drive here, the hard drive with the system reserve, actually had to be the first boot device. And so now I think we're ready to overclock because I couldn't be bothered reinstalling Windows again. And then we'll install some games and see how everything goes. So at this stage, I think it's the motherboard because I've put in another CPU and it just doesn't want to go. Like it's just having these boot issues and... So I'm going to flip the motherboard to another one and see if it will start working again. Okay, so at this stage, we've tried another motherboard now. We've tried different memory, tried a different SATA cable, just tried a lot of different things. And it's still giving out the same problem where it just kind of refuses to boot. It does boot, but then it goes after that. It just will not uh, do anything and gives out a no signal. So what we're going to do now... We're going to just mission abort this. I'm going to leave it all there, take the graphics card out, and just try and just set up a test bed setup so I can overclock some X58 goodness. My goodness. Okay, so we are finally now back up and running with X58, and everything seems like it's good to go now. Got all the memory recognized. And we're running on the X5675 here at 3.34 gigahertz. Out of the box, haven't changed anything. Temperatures are really good too. So this is looking promising now. And a lot of people are asking about this cooler here. It's the uh, Cooler Master MA620P. Uh, so I'm gonna be doing a project with Cooler Master pretty soon. Uh, this is just one of the coolers I had lying around and I wanted to use it uh, and just see how it went before, of course, I do the uh, big video for Cooler Master on it. And it's really good. Like, though, if it's one thing about it is it is a bit of a pain to install. Like, it's massive, as you can see here. But the installation kit as well is like that old school bolt with a tool. And it does take a little while to install. So if you're doing it for one build, it's going to look really good. Because it's got RGB as well on the fans. And it's gonna, it can sync up to your motherboard if you're getting the new, latest, and greatest motherboards. Uh, but it is a pain to install. So for a test bench, it's not suitable. But... For everything else in between, it is really nice. Uh, so, I don't know. I really don't know so far what's with the Baron case and what's causing that issue, but everything looks like it's good to go now. So now we're finally into action with the X58 motherboard and the X5675. And I can confirm that the X5675, at least the one I got here, is a pretty good overclocker. 4.5 gigahertz on air. So we're getting over a thousand points in Cinebench. This is for like a $50 CPU, guys. Unbelievable performance. Got the memory, some random blue memory sitting on there. 1800 megahertz in triple channel. So if you were to compare that to some brand new dual channel stuff, that's like 2400 megahertz. This is out of hardware that's almost 10 years old. I'm loving it. And you're probably like, it's got no USB 3. Pfft. Add in a PCIe card. USB 3 front out. Got it there. Doesn't have NVMe. PCIe card. Doesn't have set PCIe, PCIe. PCIe will solve your life problems. Anyway, so that was a lot of headaches. That express gate setting really held me back a heap of time because I've never come into that problem before. And there's a Cinebench score there, over a thousand points. But we're gonna do a little bit of fine tuning now with this, take you guys into a tour into the BIOS with X58 and start overclocking and talking about some of the settings. So this is a mid-range board uh, it's actually really nice though, because back in the days of X58, mid-range boards were solid overclockers. So, especially on air and water. 
Now, this is a problem I came into. And with X58, you can come into these weird problems depending on the motherboard, depending on the BIOS, and depending on the settings. I have to leave this on with my Corsair SSD. If I don't, my computer won't boot. It's extremely weird. First time I've run into this problem. Now, another thing with the uh, Gigabyte UD3R in the past, I believe I ran into a problem where if you didn't have the uncore frequency at a certain ratio in regards to the CPU ratio, you couldn't boot your uh, PC properly. Like you'd get in, you'd start stress testing, you'd think, oh, okay, this overclock's good. Then you go to restart your PC and everything just cycles. And then you set it to a, I forgot what, exactly what the ratio was, but you set it to a ratio that like three to four, I think it is, and then it works. Um, the ASUS board doesn't have that problem. At least I haven't run into it yet, but we're gonna talk about some of the settings here in this BIOS. So uncore frequency, you can set this well below your four or 4.4 or 4.2 gigahertz overclock. Doesn't have to be anywhere near four gigahertz. Uh, the QPI link rate as well. Set this to not slow mode, because that will literally make your computer so slow. Set it to the option just above slow mode. If you set it to these other two here, that's close to 8,000 and above 8,000, that will make your computer unstable and possibly not boot as well. So there are a few settings here, of course, that can stop you from booting. Now, another thing as well, if it's your first time overclocking X58, drop your memory down to even like just 1000 megahertz. You can deal with that later and you can overclock memory. I've got memory overclocking tutorials on the channel. A lot of other people have memory overclock tutorials, but uh, I've got that already at 1800 megahertz. So that's all good, I know it works. Uh, speed step technology, you can disable this. It's not a big deal. Um, I like to leave on C1E, which is enhanced uh, state. So when your computer is not in action, it'll quickly throttle down to a, a state just below your overclock. And that's how I've always rolled with this platform generally. Uh, sometimes you can leave it on, depending on the uh, motherboard, because you may wish to unlock the max multiplier. As you can see here, it went from 23 to 25 instantly. So that's the turbo multiplier. This board enables me to unlock that without having this setting enabled, which is great. But if you need to have that enabled, you may wish to leave it enabled to get that extra multiplier. Now, moving down here to the DRAM timings, there's my custom timings, of course. If you're overclocking memory, you will need that. But here we go to voltages, okay? So this is an important thing. Since we've dropped the uncore voltage and our memory overclock is not super high as well as our QPI speed, we don't have to go berserk on this setting here. We can leave it at 1.26. IOH voltage, which is input output hub voltage. Uh, you can leave that at like 1.18 and drop your uncore down to around three gigahertz. They should be okay to go. Now we look here, CPU PLL. If you're going for me like a 4.5 gigahertz overclock, this is important to set pretty high. You may even wish to go higher than 1.9. Uh, you may even wish to go to like two, 2.1 if you're on uh, you know, LN2 or whatever. The 1.9 seems to be about the sweet spot for this overclock as well as 1.393 voltage. Now, if you're going for 4.2, 4.4, even 4.4 might work at around 1.35, uh, 4.2 might work at 1.32. Uh, so just keep in mind, I'm going for like 4.5 on air, which is kind of hard to do. So I do need to play around with those settings. Will depend on the CPU you have. This is the X5675. So it does seem to like to go to 4.5 on air. Anyway, last setting here, of course, load line calibration. I like to leave that enabled, uh, especially on Zeus motherboards. They do get their load line calibration settings pretty much right on the money. Uh, the spread spectrums disable both of those. I think they're for interference or whatever, and they can uh, be a detriment to overclocks. So now we've got all those settings locked in. Um, we can even just give it a bit of a buffer just to make sure, because I will be doing stress testing on this platform and I will be comparing it to something of a new generation pretty soon. Uh, but once we've done with that, we can then save our overclock profile and you see all these weird names, but anyway, just ignore them. We'll put 4.5 stable. And then we can save that first profile. And then we can save, exit, bang, you're good to go guys. And that's about it for overclocking the X58 platform. Of course, if you have any questions or comments in relation to that, then drop a comment in the comment section below. Remember guys, overclocking can take time. I've literally been overclocking or trying to get this thing to work properly for I'd say about five or six hours now, uh, including last night and this morning. So it can take a long time to lock in your overclock. Every CPU is different. Of course, 
uh, you can copy my settings, but just understand how the settings are correlated to the voltages, because that's a big issue or a big thing to get these uh, overclocks working properly. With that said, let's take a look at that Cinebench score and see the temperatures after a stress test and make sure this thing's okay because we're gonna install some games and see how it plays with the 1080 Ti. <laughs> So there's the Baron case there. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it at the moment. I'll probably put in a smaller motherboard, maybe a H or P55 in this thing, and then test it out with like a Xeon X3470 or something. Because I just think for X58, the board's really big to begin with. So it was a bit of a struggle to get the board in. And of course I had all these problems and I don't think it was the Baron. It's just uh, putting it all back together does take a bit of time. And I'm gonna give the X58 board here a bigger home. So it does deserve a bigger home, especially with the size of this cooler too and the fact that I know this cooler works for 4, 4.5 gigahertz now. So what I'm gonna do is, yeah, find a new home for it. And then when we do the comparison versus the 8700K, we're gonna give this the best chance it's got because it deserves it. So now I've just finished benchmarking a few games, uh, installing the rest of the games as well for the upcoming comparison between the 8700K. But to answer that question of is X58 still worth it, I think the results speak for themselves. We're getting 120 FPS maxing out Final Fantasy uh, 15 at 1080p. Uh, this is with the 1080 Ti, this is the high settings. Step it up to 1440p, it looks like the graphics card is starting to take the burden. The CPU can definitely keep up. And this is the latest and greatest title on PC. We look at Dota 2, a little bit of a sneak preview. This thing's getting over 200 FPS and it's still got a lot of headroom to go. So 4.5 gigahertz on this CPU is no joke. Now I've looked at the prices on eBay, X58 motherboards are overpriced. They're going for like 200 US plus. Uh, really, when you get an X58 board, you wanna get it on a bargain. Like uh, about an hour drive from me, there's one up on Gumtree at the moment for 110 Australian, which would be like 80 something US dollars. That's coming with eight gigabytes of DDR3 memory as well. And that's the biggest kicker is the DDR3 memory. It's really a lot cheaper than DDR4 memory. So if you're in the market to pick up some bargains, you can get that motherboard, get that RAM, and even off AliExpress, you can get the CPU, which is the X5675. You can pick that up for 60 US dollars, chuck it on this motherboard, and you probably will want to get some good cooling because you can use it in the future anyway. And you can overclock this thing sky high, and it'll perform really well, even with one of the best graphics cards out there today. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let us know in the comments section below, have you overclocked an X58 motherboard and CPU before? Do you want to try it definitely can be a lot trickier i mean there is bugs and problems that rear their ugly heads but once you get past that and you get this thing stable it is definitely a blessing in disguise uh, for me i do get frustrated and i do come into these problems with this platform but once i get through it and see the performance like i've got today it does make me feel a lot better i mean the triple channel memory is still so relevant in today's games ddr3 is so much cheaper than ddr4 a lot of people chuck it in with the x58 boards and so it's just really one big bargain to be had if you can pick up the deals. I've got a lot of X58 boards around here already. I've got like, I think three, so I don't need any more. But if I did, I'd be picking up that deal. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you in the next video very soon, which will be the comparison. And then later on, I can't really say too much. There will be another comparison coming for you guys too. Stay tuned, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.